So I'm sitting here with Larry Harvey, who is the founder of Burning Man. And uh, we're doing a little interview today because I was wondering about a couple of questions regarding Burning Man and today's culture and di digital culture. Um, so Larry, I wanted to ask you, Burning Man is in a way, you created a community or you started a community to grow, uh, root grow, um, that's, that, or a brand in a way that dominates all the other brands around it um, when it exists. How do you see, um, how do you see the, the term branding or a brand in today's society, in our culture? And Burning Man is, is one like that. Well, uh, I, I wouldn't, we, we don't apply the word, the word to Burning Man because we, we don't think it's accurate uh, for us. Uh, you know, the, the, the But at the same time, you know, if I'm looking at the other wall, there's the ten principles, and there's the logic. But, but there's a difference between a brand it is uh, quite a different concept. It, it, it's not really a cultural concept. It's 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 a commercial concept. And and in fact, people talk about. I've even heard people talk about themselves as brands, as as projecting brands to their friends on the internet. Right. Well, yeah, there's the, the article in the Forbes, uh, I think five years ago, a brand called me and the society is pushing us, each one of us should be or supposedly needs to be a brand. Yes, and, 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 and that tends to mean you're defined by what you consume. Uh, uh, we look at what we do is generating uh, uh, identity. And identity is an anthropological concept. Uh, identity is produced by culture, uh, and not by n not by consumption. And and uh, so yes, we have uh, ten principles. Uh, they aren't ten advertising slogans, however. Um, I actually authored the ten principles after thinking a very long time about what the values, the demonstrated values, developed within and out uh, and through our community over a period of many, many years, and uh, so they were merely meant to describe a phenomena that, that exists, and um, uh, so there were, were actually, that was actually describing cultural behaviors, values people had, had uh, uh, introjected, had, 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 had absorbed in themselves that it affected the way they behaved and, and their sense of who they were, their being, in some way. And uh, uh, whereas branding, well, that, that's, that's it, 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 its relevance to, to, its spiritual relevance is beside the point. Uh, it, that has to do really with what you buy. And uh, uh, so, uh, we never, we don't use the word branding, not because we want to distinguish our brand from other brands, but because we think demonstrably uh, we aren't one. Uh, and, and, uh, a brand is about image, you know, it's about creating a seductive image that influences people to buy a product. Uh, uh, Identity is another concept, is a spiritual concept. And, uh, uh, and, and we think that we can empirically demonstrate that we have generated culture. It has, uh, uh, it, it, that, that in the lives of, as a kind of self-organizing principle uh, that has the capacity to reproduce itself uh, spontaneously through uh, social interactions, and that's much different from uh, uh, a consumer allegiance created by advertising. And the one is from the outside in, the other intends to be from the inside out. And that uh, that leads me to the next question. I mean, we live nowadays in in a society where where more and more uh, online platform is pushing towards, or their business model is made upon. Um, social interaction and your personal data. You know, I, I, 
on, it's, it's a funny comparing, but I can put Burning Man versus Facebook, and, and hey, we have two platforms that allow, the, the, it's a social generated content, we allow participants to express themselves. Though, on a way, Facebook is taking all your personal data as much as they can dig, so they can sell you commercials. In other words, they're, they're, they're parasitizing processes that otherwise might, might lead to cultural uh, uh, phenomena. Uh, well, we don't do that uh, in any way, never have. Uh, there, there's an interesting phenomenon that Growing up, uh, we're very much creature of the internet. Have been affected by it powerfully. We're based in San Francisco, which is next door to Silicon Valley, which is the center of global innovation on the internet. And uh, there's a, a company called. I'll give you an example. There's a company called uh, uh, Kickstarter. Yep. And now funding for our projects at Burning Man. Uh, uh, it, there's probably as much or more of that coming through the uh, 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 projects funded through Kickstarter than, than, than from the funds our organization gives to artists directly in the form of grants. Um, now, I've heard that called crowdsourcing. Uh, it, 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 I, I think uh, it, it's uh, the highest and, and best and most effective use of, of, of that kind of technology could better be called, certainly in our case, community sourcing. I went to their headquarters in Manhattan and I asked them, uh, how do you prevent fraud? What what's to prevent someone from putting up some specious project that they, you know, that they yeah. designed on Mac? And I want to build a temple, let's say, and I collect, uh, that was one of the problems yeah. that I know Maybe. Burning Man ran last year. I want to build a temple and I raised couple hundred thousand dollars and then it's like whoa these people raised a lot of money and hold on we need to check it out well exactly and, and I asked them well how do you prevent that I'm talking to the people who run the company and, and they said well uh, it, it, this process really only w works if, if, if you have a lot of friends uh, <laughs> because the kind of people who would exploit it uh, uh, unscrupulously uh, don't have any friends. Oh, well, that's a good point. Uh, in the case of the temple, they brought in all this money, and you might wonder what they did with it. But of course, the product of what they did was made manifest to an entire community. And the way, reason they were able to raise far more money than we were able to supply them is because there was a community that went to the event that, that uh, at a cultural level, were heavily invested in the, the temple. And it was extremely meaningful to them. And, and that's what motivated them uh, to give. It was community sourced. And, and whereas, uh, which I, I think is very intriguing. Uh, it, so here you have a, a means of raising money that, that is based on cultural values. Oh. Well, you can tune in and, and participate in a bigger project than you that each one of is a contributor, or what we talked earlier to this interview about the social justice revolution in Israel. I, can, I want to encourage social justice. And what does that mean? And each one of us has his own perspective. Well, yes, and each of us does. And, and, and where that can short circuit is, you, you know, you can get everyone saying we're for social justice. And, and, but then when it comes down to what to do, that becomes a political question. And as soon as you ask the political question, the movement so generated fractures yeah. into competing factions. But if, like us, what you're doing is 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 generating a, a, a self-regulating culture, which itself is organized by the participants, um, that's an entirely um, uh, it's a different proposition. The the ten principles are descriptive. And of, of how the what the culture ha has grown to value and how it behaves, uh, and what it evaluates and what it doesn't, right. in a way. So when you talk about what to do, well, we're project based, and and it turns out, in the context of a culture, uh, when you reach the point where it, 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 there might be 
a dispute about what sounding slogans mean. Everyone has, has internalized values, and, and certainly in the kind of social sphere that we create, that's very much based on, on, on it's often project-based and... And, uh, uh, and experience, also. When someone comes up with an idea that has cultural resonance, that has that, that, that one objective test is ideas that seem to resonate with all ten principles at once, because that's what culture is. It's just patterns of behavior, complex patterns of behavior, and 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 when something rhymes with all of that, it, it's amazing. Uh, uh, you, you can generate consensus very quickly. Everyone says, "Oh, oh, that's it. That's what we are," and then they organize and act together. And it actually leads to greater coherence, greater coordination, greater cooperation, and, and collaboration on, on, on real scales. Um, so the problem with the internet often is that it's based on, and why people sometimes overestimate what crowdsourcing can do in a political context, is it's based on links that are inherently weak. You know, well, I'm for that, I'll press a button, I'll donate a dollar. You know. Yeah, but then when you have eight million people donates a dollar, then Obama wins the campaign, right. uh, regardless. Yeah. Well, good luck to him this year. Uh, he's getting much less of a response than he did formerly. N now that his policies have been tested, um, and, and the ringing slogans uh, uh, are subject to great scrutiny. But. Uh, uh, no, but you you probably familiar. Are you familiar with the term meme? M E M E. I am. I don't believe in memes, nor do I believe in ghosts. Uh, but I understand what they're getting at, uh, and and that's kind of what I'm. I'm I'm just not attributing it to it to, to some kind of supernatural agency that's independent of of human interactions, and as if memes were entities that did the organizing rather than the, the organizing issuing out of human interactions. The, 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 the meme is an objective entity. It, 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 I, I think it's just fallacious reasoning. But it's, it's a piece of content, a cultural content. Yeah, but why does it catch on? Because it's, it, the meme is powerful or because the cultural context? I think it, it ha I think it has both. First, you need to create good ones that people would like uh, to to pass along, but not at the level of just it, it, it affiliations with uh, with with notions that that, that 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 can spread virally and survive for a while, but don't hold up in real life. Uh, the only way you can make them hold up in real life is if people actually are part of a culture. And, yeah. And. And it has empathy to its thorns. Yes, it. I, I've seen this happen in just in artistic collaborations. When when you get uh, people co-creating, and they're very much in line with with with, with a project, it gives them a, a, an objective focus and a, and a transcendent center. Uh, if someone comes up with an idea, someone will, someone will, people will start jumping on it instantly. Though they they sense that it rhymes with other values, and and, and that that cohere. And, and express what they are together, and and uh, and to help define what they can contribute, and uh, and someone will say, oh well, we could do it this way, and then someone will say, oh well, if you did, if you combine those things, well, let's look at it broadly. Then this would combine with that, and we could do this, and and why don't we bring in this? Why don't we use this soundtrack? And why don't we? And 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 suddenly, the thing in a sense takes on a life of its own. Now you want to call it a meme, you can. Uh, but any artist who works in, in, in a collaborative art form is familiar with that kind of process. And it can happen, in fact, using the, the Internet as a tool, on, on, uh, it can scale up. But, but only in the presence of, of, of a coherent culture. And that, that takes, you have to cultivate that and you have to develop that. You, you can't manufacture, but you can engineer environments that, that, uh, support its creation. And, and uh, uh, that's far different from projecting a brand or creating a, uh, uh, a superficial image. And, 
Uh, and that's why in the, in the desert you see armies of people working on art projects together. And, and, and off playa, you see, you, you, you see this crowd, and I would say community sourcing for the funding that, that, uh, uh, that truly is, is, becomes very potent in the world. Yeah. And I mean, uh, you you um, you mentioned the temple earlier, and I think one of the interesting one of the interesting aspects you probably have seen the, also the movie um, Into the Wild. Um, it's about yes, the, I have. And then one of the one of the things that you know he curved in the car before he passed away is happiness is only true when shared. Yeah, At the same that that was the poignant. At the same time, we live in a society where we're oversharing and we're flooded with, with you know, data around us or visual around us. And also, not just happiness is a, a, a um, fundamental part of our culture. We have also death, we have sadness, we have that balance and, and in a way, create the yin and the yang in our culture. Well, we're overwhelmed by information. Uh, uh, you know, avalanches of factoids. Uh, uh, dubious assertions, uh, uh, a, a, a cacophony of information, uh, uh, without without some kind of shared cultural context that allows people to creatively construe that information, then it's almost an affliction. Uh, you know, I I see people who are spending increasing amounts of their time. Uh, uh, on the internet talking about trivial things and honestly on this. How does that construe? It doesn't. And, and uh, it's just of a piece with other kinds of mass communication and, or, or indeed uh, uh, the, the, the mass economy that, that, that tends to atomize individual experience and isolate people from one another. It's almost toxic to the, to the uh, creative processes of culture. Well, at the same time, the commercial um, the commercial world is pushing into you know the perfect image. You know, there's buy this cream if you get older. Um, if you feel anxious, buy these pills. Exactly. If if you are afraid of something, you know, this is your solution rather than hey, you know, in our culture we have mixed things and in sure, it's. What's the last time you saw a commercial that said you're feeling anxious? Talk to a friend. Yeah. Well, it's it's a really bad it, business it, 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 model. That would, that would be a bad business model because it wouldn't generate profit. Yeah. Or you know, unless Facebook does that, talk to a friend and we'll take twenty five percent of whatever your time or what you give to a friend or make you watch commercials. Or, or we, you can <laughs> yes, or we can you can go on a list and where you will you're guaranteed to find a friend. Yeah. Well, yeah, if we'll find you as a friend and you satisfy with your... In statistical norms, they'll be like you. And but that's not the way anyone ever found a friend. But this is, I mean, this is the, these days the commodification of social interaction and your personal identity. You know, that, that's what brands are. They're, they're, it's commodified identity. <laughs> In other words, it's, it's not authentic. And it's not nourishing. Uh, it just, all it does is isolate you and, 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 and stimulate lusts and desires and obsessions that are a substitute for uh, an experience of your own being yeah. and that of others. Uh, but of course, as you say, that that experience doesn't necessarily, uh, it can lead, I think that can lead to actual many forms of prosperity and productivity in society. It just doesn't happen to reliably Make money for particular interests. Yeah, it's a it's a bad business model no, in a way. No, but a good social policy. Yeah, and even a good economic policy if you want to think forward. Yeah, I mean, I come from a perspective of sustainability, and and how do you create that sustainability and and let the process to well, progress? See, that, that's the interesting thing about. See, I'm a, a very always been very interested in the analogy between or, or, or organic evolution, biology, and, and culture which I think that you, you can describe culture in terms of biology. I mean, what, what is a culture? It, it's, it, uh, well, it refers to a community that, 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 that has achieved a kind of homeostasis. That's the first thing life does, you know? It, life's just a bubble and, it, and it, 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 semi-permeable membranes 
blood in some things and organisms expel other things and, and they maintain an equilibrium between what's inside and what's outside. Cultures do that. That's what they do. Yeah. And, and that's how they sustain themselves through time. And like organisms, that's how they survive. And like organisms, uh, cultures reproduce. That, that's what tradition is about. And, and, and that's what Tradition, rituals, symbols, yeah. the different aspects of society yeah, and culture. Yeah, you look at that as cultural DNA. And, and I don't think that's a strained analogy. I think it's a very pertinent one. And uh, uh, it, what we're interested in is, is becoming conscious of how that can work. Our event, we regard as a, as a, as a, as a, as a social experiment, and we've tried to design an environment that optimizes, for, for just the purposes of the demonstration, perhaps, uh, uh, the, the, the generation of culture uh, uh, by, by, by simply creating the, the, the framework of a society that is purely designed to do that. Uh, that's why we have no trade at the event, no commerce, not because we're against commerce, that would be silly, that's to be against commerce is to be against civilized life, it's yeah. almost to be against being human. But. Uh, yeah, I used to explain my friend. Man, that the, I hated will perish. <laughs> yeah. No, I used to explain my friend. They're asking, hey, you know, how does Burning Man that thing work? So I was like, well, you, you buy a ticket and you get access to really. And that's commerce. You buy a ticket. But we create an environment, an event during which, which uh, that, that whole aspect of branding and, 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 and uh, 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 capitalism is excluded for purposes of the experiment. Yeah. For eight days to see what will happen. What's happening is this, that's why I say from a poli political policy perspective, what's happened is that it's generated enormous creativity, not just in the arts, but, but in a number of initiatives that, have, initiatives that have issued out into the world. That's because people took the values generated by their experience of Burning Man, internalized them just in, 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 as an identity, and, and then went out in the world and began to reproduce those values with others, because that's one of our yeah. values, is collaboration and cooperation and, 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 and uh, uh, to, to do any number of things. Uh, and uh, uh, in, in all of these things, have, uh, are, in every one of them, there have been things that are of, 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 of real and measurable social benefit to society. Yeah. Well, Commodified economics don't do that. You know that that is the. If I were to criticize capitalism, if, if you adopt capitalism as a kind of religious faith, the mystic finger of the market writes upon the wall, you know, like God, uh, and, and and somehow works out for the welfare of everybody. Well, anybody who looks at the history of capitalism knows that it doesn't. It's a wonderful tool for distributing, you know, predictivity and and, and, and wealth. No one doubts that. Uh, but but if, if other values that used to be supplied in other ways uh, 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 are super added to that, uh, then uh, it, it, it 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 becomes destructive. And and now the whole globe faces a crisis at the rates of, of breakneck consumption that the developed world practices. And it, now the world's going global. Yeah, we're consuming no, ourselves. Every, everyone consumes at that rate in that way. It's unsustainable. And everyone knows it, but nobody knows what to do about it. And we won't know what to do about it until we, until we start looking at the problem from a cultural perspective. And, 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 and I don't think that's naive. In, 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 in the past, there have been cultural movements in the world that, 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 that have spread at epidemic rates, have overturned political, uh, 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 overturned the, the established order. Um, uh, it, it, it probably had more effect in the history and the thinking of mankind than, than, than power held in, 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 uh, in any other way. And um, uh, we need we need that kind of uh, 
I think if you, if you don't approach our problems from that perspective, we can't solve them. Yeah. We simply can't. Well, hopefully, I mean, the future is going to be better. I mean, yesterday uh, there was the, the Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah, and so today it's the first day of the year, and uh, I don't know. I'm optimistic. I think that... I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> what, what, what held Jewish people together <laughs> for millennia uh, wasn't branding. They, they didn't get... It wasn't branding. It was identity. A different concept. Yeah. And how do you develop identity these days? Well, hopefully... Well, how do you do it? And that's, that's the question. We're not saying that we have the formula. We're saying we have a formula that is demonstrably very effective. It witness the fact that we're doing what is, in fact, a very small thing in worldly terms. I mean, it's very small, and yet it's world famous. Yeah. Why? Because we're so good at projecting our image? We don't even have an advertising budget. We've never advertised. This is pretty... I think we're on to something. Yeah. Well, it's something for the other people to check out if they want to come to the desert. Or... Well, that's what we say. They, they, they should check it out. People have... Uh, 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 we're growing in the teeth of... Uh, uh, what is this? A depression? A, rese a death session? I don't know. It's, it's, these are hard times. And, 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 and yet we're growing. It must be because... If you want to express it in marketing terms, we're offering people something that they need. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Larry, for your time, and sure. uh, and have another wonderful uh, year. <laughs> well, thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> ciao, ciao.